Hello there, my name is Alex and I am the lead developer advocate here at Tailscale. Welcome into this platform con virtual talk for 2025. I'm going to introduce you to Tailscale today, which is probably the easiest way to connect any of your devices and services together. It's a VPN, but it's also a lot more besides. So in this virtual talk, I'm going to take you through five things I bet you didn't know you could do with Tailscale. Okay, so let's kick things off by looking at all the different places that you can run and install Tailscale. So if I head over to tailscale.com slash download, you'll notice that we support pretty much every single major OS, Mac OS, iOS, Windows, Linux, and Android. But what you don't notice under iOS specifically is that there's also a TV OS client as well. And the same with Android, you can run an Android TV too. And the reason I bring that up is because you can install Tailscale on pretty much anything, and that includes things like an Apple TV. In fact, a couple of years ago, we had a Tailscaler even install Tailscale on their robot vacuum. Why did he do this? Nobody knows. But the point is, you can. We are a program written in Go, which for those of you that are familiar with Go, means it runs pretty much anywhere on a modern computer these days, or any, any modern OS. And you can use Tailscale to connect pretty much anything to anything. So what do I mean by that? I mean that you can connect a GitHub Action Runner to a Cloud VPS, or you could connect that Cloud VPS to something behind a residential firewall without opening any ports, I might add. That's the important thing, using the Tailscale overlay uh, NAT traversal technology that we have. Uh, I could access pretty much any service that I have self-hosted running in my home lab from my phone over 5G, again, without any complex configuration. We can handle things like automatic HTTPS certificate provisioning uh, using Tailscale Serve and Tailscale Funnel. And really, the list goes on and on and on. So I highly encourage you to go over to tailscale.com today and take a look at something called the Tailscale How It Works blog post. I learned an awful lot about networking when I first joined Tailscale and read this blog post. Uh, we don't have time to dig into it all today. As you see, it's, uh, it's a chunky post. But essentially, one of the core components of Tailscale that you want to get your head around, first of all, is rather than being a point-to-point -point VPN like you might be used to with Cisco AnyConnect or Surfshark or any of these other, you know, any other type of VPN, we're backed by WireGuard, but we're also a mesh VPN network as well. So we use the WireGuard protocol to traverse packets, and then we're a mesh network. So every other device directly talks to every other device. And then you couple that with our NAT traversal technology, and suddenly firewalls basically disappear. Don't tell your network guy, at least. Well, we do, we have a solution for that, and it's called ACLs and grants. But again, we don't have time to get into that today. So I think it's probably fair to say at this point that uh, you've got some homework to figure out what Tailscale, well, what problem Tailscale can solve for you. And I think that'll probably do it for an intro. So let's get on to the first tip, shall we? Now you may have heard of an MCP or a model context protocol in the world of AI, but did you know you can use an MCP to query the status and perform a whole bunch of other tasks on your tailnet? That's exactly what this Tailscale MCP server I found on GitHub will let us do. So for example, I have configured here my Claude desktop application to be able to talk to my demo tailnet. And here, for example, I'm listing all the devices available on my tailnet. Now, if we wanna do a bunch of other stuff, you can see that here I can do ping peers, I can list uh, devices, there's a bunch of actions I can perform too. Let's do something really quite involved. I'm gonna do get tailnet info. So I'm gonna do T, which is the shorthand to basically jump into that MCP server, get tailnet info. This is going to now go out over an API connection and query, once I allow it, of course. Uh, it's going to use the API token that I've configured to talk to the Tailscale API and then use Claude to kind of interpret the stuff it gets back um, over the API. It's then going to format that nicely for me on the screen. As you can see here, my Tailnet name, uh, the owner at least, is a tail and scales at gmail.com. And don't worry, there's nothing sensitive in here because most of this information is already in many of my YouTube videos on the internet already. Uh, and we can see all the different devices that are here, for example. So if I want to do TLS, for example, this is going to list all of the devices available on my tailnet, including the routes that are configured for them. You can start to configure a whole bunch of different things to programmatically talk to your tailnet and say, 
when this happens, do this, or if this condition is met, do that. And you can do it programmatically in your code using a Tailscale compatible MCP server. I just love watching this coming back. You can see that uh, active in the last five hours, uh, there was four devices here dropped off my tailnet. My phone is offline completely. And the laptop that I'm using to record this demo right now, Baldrick, that one's online too. So I just wanna make it absolutely clear that this is not a Tailscale official project. This is just something that Alex thought was really cool and interesting uh, over on GitHub. And I'll put a link to that down below. You can use Tailscale to connect any device to any environment, no matter the network topology between them. And probably one of the best examples I have of this is how I use Tailscale as part of my CI CD workflow to deploy the website perfectmediaserver.com. On the screen here, I've got the GitHub repo that backs that website. And I'm going to jump into the GitHub Actions workflow for just a second and take a look at this build, publish, and deploy job that I have here. You can see that first of all, we're connecting the runner environment to my tailnet. So when this action runs, I've supplied an OAuth client and an OAuth secret so that this GitHub action runner can join itself to my tailnet as an ephemeral node. Once that's done, all it does is it runs a bunch of Docker Compose commands to actually build and deploy the website. It's exactly the same steps as I would do if I just logged in and typed the thing manually. It's really straightforward and really simple to get started. And you, you could argue, I suppose, that this, uh, this do the deploy thing step on line 19 isn't the most sophisticated thing in the world. But hopefully this starts your mental juices flowing of, ah, I didn't know I could integrate Tailscale into my CI CD workflows. It's as easy as this using the Tailscale GitHub action on a GitHub runner at least. And so why don't we go ahead and just try it out for a second. At least I think it's still working. I'm literally just gonna add one, two, three to the end of this file just for testing purposes. So I'm gonna put this into my Git as a test. I'm gonna push this change and I'm going to try and have this deploy in real time on video for us. So GitHub Actions will pick up the change that's been pushed to the repo and it's going to automatically start building in the background. Uh, so I'm gonna bring up this job now, what it's doing is it's now connecting the GitHub runner environment to my personal tailnet. And in fact, if we go over now here to my GitHub, or my Tailscale admin console, you can see I've got an ephemeral GitHub node that's added itself to my tailnet programmatically using an OAuth client secret. It's now doing the build and, you know, doing the things that MKDocs does in the background to build the static website. When that's done, as I, as I said a moment ago, it's going to pull down those changes, deploy them, and then we'll have an updated page on the website. So let's go and take a quick look at remote access, tail scale. Okay, so perfectmediaserver.com. <laughs> okay, we're literally in the middle of the deploy right now. Proof that it is real. This is not a smoke and mirrors demo, people. So let's go to the VPNs page and tail scale, and we should see any moment now at the end of this page... Uh, where did I put it? Tail scale, reverse proxy overview. Is it here? Yeah, there you go. There's the one, two, three. I was on the wrong page. So as easy as that, you can have tail scale be part of your CI CD pipeline. And the really nice thing is, is because it's using tail scale SSH behind the scenes, you never have to worry about managing SSH keys or providing extra secrets or it's, it's just a really nice way to go. So if you've been looking for a way to connect a GitHub runner in the cloud, to any other piece of infrastructure that you might be using or controlling, I highly suggest you take a look at the Tailscale GitHub Action Runner. So in this next tip you might not have known, I want to introduce you to the power of Tailscale SSH. This is a way that you can manage your SSH connections and identities without ever having to worry about rotating keys or certificates or passwords ever again. So I'm gonna go over to DigitalOcean, just create a completely brand new, fresh droplet. Uh, this is going to live for about two minutes, so I'm really not going to worry too much about what's going on here. Now, whilst that droplet is creating itself, I'm going to head over to my Tailscale admin console and start generating my installation script. So I'm going to click on Add Device up here, click on Linux Server. I don't need any tags, although it's worth talking about tags because you can use these to granularly divide up your tailnet. So you can say that the Pers the people with uh, servers with a tag of dev, for example, can only be SSH'd into by 
other people who are tagged as dev for example you can add specific people to groups and the tags are just a really powerful way of grouping and dividing up access to different parts of your tailnet now you may have noticed also in the github action runner piece that we just did that there was a ci tag on there as well so that's another way that you can prevent devices from being able to ssh to anywhere in your tailnet and limit kind of limit the blast radius of what's going on so I'm not going to set up any tags today because I just want to keep things simple. I also actually think doing this as an ephemeral node, no, I'm not going to do that. Exit nodes, we haven't come onto those yet, but they're a way to route all of your traffic out through a specific piece of infrastructure. Sure, why not? Let's do that. And we can route all of our traffic out through DigitalOcean. That'd be a good little demo, wouldn't it? So I think we're just going to use this and just do generate install script, and it's going to automatically generate the auth key for me and put any... Um, command line arguments that I need in front of me too. So I have an IP address here, so I'm going to just SSH into this box. Now remember, I'm going to be using a password this time. Next time, we won't be. So uh, let me type in my super secret password. Hopefully I get that one right. Excellent. And now all I'm going to do is just copy and paste that command that was generated from the Tailscale admin console. So what it's going to do, it's going to download and install Tailscale onto this completely fresh droplet it's then going to add it to my tailnet automatically and programmatically using the auth key that it generated for me automatically as well and then we're going to do something called tail scale set and this is going to give us the permission to ssh into this box so i'm going to do tail scale set dash dash ssh so now what i can do is i can go and find the name of this box on my tailnet so it should be some really long generic name but i'm going to rename this thing i'm going to go into edit machine name and just call this one bob <laughs> maybe you're familiar with rowan atkinson anyway um here is the name of that machine and you'll notice when i want to ssh into this box now i can just do ssh root at bob and that's all there is to it there are no ssh keys there are no passwords nothing like that it just works now i did promise you we were going to use bob as an exit node just to traverse all of my traffic out through this droplet you need to manually approve exit nodes because they're considered risky when i say risky i mean it's a risk that you can permit all of that traffic to traverse out through a specific node you can configure something called an auto approver in your acls or your grants which is this which is this file here which lets you basically programmatically configure everything to do with your tailnet that's a bit of a, a tangent and beyond the scope of this particular tip but what we want to do is manually approve this exit node so if we go into edit root settings and then use as exit node what we should notice is that this little exclamation point here now disappears and in my tailscale client so this is on my local macbook i've now got a tailscale exit node called bob so let's bring up ip chicken my favorite IP address capturing website. Uh, so my IP address is on the screen right here. And if I go to exit nodes and select Bob, what we should notice now is that all of the traffic is now coming out through DigitalOcean. Isn't that cool? Now, the other thing that I should probably show you about Tailscale SSH before we move on to the next tip is you can do it from the browser too. So you see this little SSH button that's right here. If I click on that, it's going to generate, and well, it's going to ask me to authenticate to prove I am who I say I am. But it's going to generate an ephemeral node again using JavaScript to connect to this node in the browser. So if I don't have the correct laptop or the specific Tailscale client can't be installed on that host, for example, I can now also SSH to this node in the browser. Again, super cool. I think Tailscale SSH might just be my favorite Tailscale feature. I am running the world's most simple web server right here. I'm just simply listing the contents of my home directory using Python on port 8000. You can see if I go to localhost and the port 8000, I can look at any of the files here in my home directory and that's all well and good. But what if I want to do this on a remote host or a host that isn't even on this physical network? So I can open up a new terminal window and type in tailscale serve and then do dash dash bg and 8000. This is going to put this node on my tailnet with a TLS certificate and I don't have to do anything. So let me just click on a uh, command click on this URL, for example. In the background, Tailscale is now going to reach out to Let's Encrypt and generate a full TLS HTTPS certificate for this domain. 
You'd have to do anything. Okay, it's free as well because Tailscale has 100 devices and three users for free. And just like that, I have now put this URL, well, the, the local Python 8000, port 8000 web server, behind a fully qualified domain name. Okay, so that's pretty cool. But what about if I want to access this on my phone when I'm not even on the same Wi-Fi, the same local area network? Well, I can go in here and find the node in question, which is Baldrick, and I can copy and paste the magic DNS name, which again, everybody gets for free as part of Tailscale. And I can open up a web browser and paste this into here. And suddenly, well, actually, let me disable Wi-Fi. I didn't do that. But the same thing will work anyway, because I'm on Tailscale anyway. I can now access the contents of this directory over Tailscale from anywhere that I am, thanks to the Natraversal technology. Again, this is a direct connection. So this device is directly connected to this laptop on the table in front of me. No com complex configuration. I did it all in real time as part of recording this video. It really is just magic. So anyway, I hope you found some interesting stuff with Tailscale today, and I hope you'll come and check us out over in the Tailscale YouTube channel and also at tailscale.com. And thank you very much for coming to this virtual talk. Uh, I guess until next time, if there is a next time, I've been Alex from Tailscale.